Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One and to your last standalone Sunday video of 2021 because from December 1st we are kicking off with Vlogmas. I have never done Vlogmas before, I'm a little bit nervous because I, I do, I work full time, YouTube is my hobby so it's not like I have nothing to do in December except produce content so I'm feeling a little bit nervous but I'm hoping it'll be fun and enjoyable so do make sure you're subscribed and do check back every day in December. There should be a new video for you if all goes to plan. Fingers crossed. Last week I uploaded my Fortnum and Mason Christmas 2021 tour. I thought we'd stick with the sort of festive theme this week and do a Christmas gift guide. My year of one, for anyone who's new to my channel, is a low buy project that I'm undertaking because in 2020 I did a no buy year. I wanted to reintroduce shopping and spending into my life in 2021 but without going back to the out of control way that I used to shop and spend before my no buy year. If you are somebody who, like I was, still am, still dealing with it, still trying to find tips and techniques to get around it, but whose emotions are very interwoven with stuff, with the accumulation of stuff, with the status of owning stuff, Christmas can be a time that can go a bit wild. A, emotionally, and B, financially. Because if you're somebody who puts importance on stuff, you're somebody who's maybe more likely to express themselves and express their appreciation and their love for other people through buying them stuff. It's like a means of communicating your feelings because if you have it wrapped up in your head that like owning X item by X brand is like a really good thing to, to do, then by gifting somebody that you feel that you are, you know, gifting them, as I said, like the sort of status and the you know, all the sort of emotions that you have tied up with the item. And I think the first thing to say about that is that that is only going to be communicated to that person if that person has the same relationship with stuff as you do. A lot of the time in the past, I feel like I was trying to communicate something by getting somebody this sort of really expensive, to me, impressive item as a gift. And I was then left feeling a bit disappointed when they seemed not underwhelmed but just not like as whelmed I suppose as I wanted them to be. To me it was this big expression of something and it was just like oh that that's a nice whatever Ralph Lauren cashmere jumper like that cost you £600 and you know if somebody isn't wrapped up in that kind of thing it's a bit over their head so you're probably not actually communicating what you think you want to communicate so I just want to first off make that point. For those of us whose emotions are very interwoven with stuff, we can almost fall into this trap of thinking that gift giving is a way of communicating our emotions and they might not actually be received in the right way anyway. So you might be financially damaging yourself for no real reason. There's that first of all, let's get that underlined. But the other thing is I think we live in a culture now where in terms of marketing it would lead us to believe that designer handbags with four figure price tags are standard Christmas gifts. And the fact is that that's not spending four figures on a handbag for somebody and then getting them a whole load of other stuff is just not normal. There is no point in bankrupting yourself for Christmas. So what I wanted to do was put together a gift guide of gifts that I think are still really good gifts and really impactful gifts but most of them are under £50. I have two at the end that are not under £50, but other than that, everything else in here is under £50. Some of it is well, well under £50. Because I feel like when you do look at gift guides, because of the way that things sort of are now and the way that that sort of rhetoric is, it's almost like there'll be, you know, a YSL handbag and then, you know, some Gucci shoes and whatever. And then whatever's in there that's under £50 looks like the sort of rubbish gift or like when people look at like a £40 eyeshadow palette and refer to it as a stocking filler so I really want to sort of rail against that because it's a horrible mindset and do some gifts under £50 that I think make a real impact and won't kind of leave you looking like you haven't gifted them in because I think that's such a fear for so many people and why so many people overspend is that sometimes you sit and you know that something's been really expensive but then it doesn't look like much can get out of hand. So Christmas gifts under £50 that make an impact. That's today's video, let's get into it. The first gift under £50 that I think is a really good gift to actually get 
is a Morphe palette. So this is my Morphe Make and Bank, which I absolutely love the colour story of. That is what that one looks like, but Morphe have done various collaborations. There are various palettes like this. This one is £20, so it's well, well under the £50 mark. And in terms of the quality, this is a bit of a spoiler for my Project Pan, but I have been working, this shadow has been in my Project Pan this year, all year. I have been trying to hit pan on it. I do have a dip going in it now, so so I'm hoping from a Project Pan point of view that I will hit pan on it. But I think that goes to speak for how tightly packed these shadows are and how pigmented they are. Even though £20 for a full palette is not that expensive in comparison to some brands, I've still not hit pan when I've been actively trying to hit pan. I really, really rate this palette in particular. But as I say, there are various Morphe palettes they are all under a certain price point, but in particular this one is £20. I think a Morphe palette is such a good gift to get. It's like a full palette as well, and it's if you're gifting somebody who is into makeup, they will know that Morphe is like a really reputable brand, although it's a budget brand. It's a brand that lots of people collaborate with because lots of people like it. So if it's somebody who will recognise the name, they will recognise the quality behind the name. And if it's somebody who won't recognise the name, they're getting a full eyeshadow palette and you're spending £20. So, all in all, great gift. Sticking with the eyeshadow palette theme, I also wanted to recommend Too Faced shadows. So again, Too Faced are another shadow brand that if you're into the sort of makeup rehab world are ridiculously hard to pan because they are notorious for being super tightly packed. So what that means is that if you gift somebody that eyeshadow palette, they're not going to hit pan and use it up within a number of months like they're going to have it it's going to last them for quite a long time so at the moment the one that's on my personal wish list is the christmas coffee palette there are eight shades in these smaller palettes that i'm referencing i'll put a picture of it up on the screen because obviously i don't actually have it although i have other toothpaste palettes and i feel very confident recommending the formula i don't have this particular palette but they have again various palettes at this size different colour stories so the Christmas coffee one is their Christmas one for this year there's also I think the other one's called Forbidden Fruitcake which is again their Christmas one but they have several in their core line as well so I'll link up some of them down below and they come in at £24 so again if you're gifting to somebody who knows makeup they're going to know the brand if you gift to somebody who doesn't really know makeup as much packaging is always really really cute it's really fun and again it's going to be really good quality shadows that you're gifting them and it's £24 however on top of it being £24 to start with which is a great price if you go on Too Faced actual website to buy directly from them if you sign up to the newsletter you get 20% off your first order so you're talking about then bringing that down to actually being under £20 this is like a great gift if you've got like nieces or nephews who are into makeup and you've got like three or four of them to buy for that 20% can totally add up by the time you've bought three or four. If you want to spend that little bit more, Too Faced also do it. They're big eyeshadow palettes at around the £40 mark. So again, if you get that with 20% off, you're actually paying 32 rather than 40 Too Faced eyeshadow palettes, well packed, last a really long time, really pigmented, generally pretty good colour story. As a gift, I feel like they're great palettes to give. And my last beauty recommendation is going up to the £35 mark and it's from Gucci Beauty and it is their lipsticks. So these are £35 each. One of these is actually a Christmas gift that I bought for my gran this year and one of them is one that I bought for myself when I was in London recently. I feel like nobody could fail to be impressed by these lipsticks. I mean they're Gucci for a start which even if you're somebody who's not into makeup you're probably going to know Gucci as a brand. Even if you're gifting somebody who's not a makeup lover but just kind of wears their standard face most days. If you can get them a good shade from the Gucci range, they will appreciate the package that they are being given. And even if they're not going to know Gucci as a name, which I feel like you'd be really hard pressed to find somebody who had literally never heard of Gucci, the actual packaging on these lipsticks is so beautiful. So I think my favourite packaging is the satin lipstick packaging, which is this like art deco gold tube. Absolutely stunning. The design that's etched into this, it's just, it looks super vintage, it looks super beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then the Vlau packaging is my second favourite, which is the one that's got the florals on it. So again, super, super pretty. Gucci packaging, I think in my opinion, that's the best 
beauty packaging on the market at the moment. I love a vintage moment so these are very very up my street from that point of view but I feel like even if you're not into like the vintage thing you can just appreciate how beautiful these are. I think they're really different to what most brands are putting out at the moment so I feel like if you gift somebody a Gucci lipstick it's something a bit different. The packaging is absolutely gorgeous. They're going to know the name and whether that's somebody who loves beauty and is going to appreciate it because they love beauty and it's high-end luxury beauty or whether it's somebody who doesn't really love beauty but does wear makeup and they're only going to have like one lipstick they may as well have one really special lipstick so I don't think anyone could fail to be impressed by a Gucci lipstick and it's £35 that to me would make a real impact as a gift. The next sort of round of things that I want to talk about are vouchers and I feel like people can see or can feel that giving vouchers is a lazy present to give. Whilst I can understand why you would think maybe like buying somebody like a Boots voucher or whatever it seems a bit generic, if you really put thought into what the person likes that you're giving them a voucher for, I think they're an absolutely brilliant present. So. I tend to get my grandfather theatre vouchers every single year for Christmas. You can choose how much you want to put on it. I feel like especially with something like theatre or just whatever the sort of experience, like I feel like an experience voucher is such a great gift to give to people because the worst thing about Christmas gifts is when there's something you're not going to use or there's something you wouldn't have really bought for yourself because you didn't really want it enough to buy it rather than you wouldn't have bought it for yourself because it's something that's maybe a bit too special like for example a Gucci lipstick. Somebody who isn't a huge beauty lover might not be inclined to make that kind of investment in a lipstick but they might still really enjoy having it and it, they could appreciate the specialness of it. But when you just get something and I don't want to sound ungrateful here but for somebody like me who is trying to unpack their relationship with stuff and is trying to reduce the amount of stuff they own, when you get stuff especially when it's gifts you can feel kind of compelled to hold on to it for longer because somebody made the effort to buy it for you even if it's something you're not going to use and you don't particularly like so I think an experience voucher is such a great way around that and if you get them the voucher so likes of like theatre tickets you're not booking tickets that they then have to be available on the date that you've booked whether that suits them or not kind of thing and then depending on how much you choose to spend on the voucher they can choose whether to you know buy two cheaper seats for it or you know put it towards a more expensive seat than they would usually sit in. It's totally up to you wh what you want to spend on theatre vouchers but I feel like a £50 theatre voucher I think that's a really really good gift if you're gifting somebody who loves the theatre. On the flip side rather than gifting somebody a voucher for something that they would really enjoy as a one-off experience something that I think would be really good is a voucher for something somebody already pays for. That for me is informed by the fact that I've been doing my budget this year and if you watched my most recent budget update I talked about all my subscription services and how much they add up to each month and how much that takes out of my budget. So if somebody was to give me like a £50 and even a £30 Netflix voucher that would mean for the next like three or five months I don't need to take my Netflix payment out of my own budget I would really really appreciate that you know taking that responsibility off of somebody that money that they already spend on that item paying it for them so that they can then choose what to spend that other money on or that might let them save that extra £10 a month or something I think that's a really good way to gift somebody something they'll actually like get the use of because it's something they're paying for already it eases their burden for X amount of months after Christmas which is great and it's never going to go to waste so yeah I think a voucher for a service that they already use is such a great idea. And the last thing I want to say about vouchers is if somebody gets a service done such as for me I get my nails done quite a lot that's another great thing to get them a voucher for like I love having my nails done but it eats a lot of my budget every month so it would be such a treat for me to be able to have that indulgence without having a bill at the end of it so and the other thing about that and I don't want to get preachy here but if you are buying a voucher for somebody who gets their hair done or their nails done or even if it's like a local restaurant that somebody goes to quite often you're there's a higher chance that you're supporting a local independent business by buying that voucher than supporting a chain however I do just want to say on the flip side of that, if the person you're buying for it goes to, you know, a chain restaurant more than they go anywhere else, if you buy them vouchers for that and that's what they're going to enjoy, 
then that's great and the thing is any custom to any branch of something helps keep it open so even through the pandemic although we know that small independent businesses ha have been hit the hardest and we do need to make that effort to support them when the Arcadia group went down it's not Philip Green who's actually affected it's all the people who are now have been made redundant and there's been a whole scandal around their pensions and everything because of the way they've been treated so there's problems everywhere with the pandemic and there's problems with the whole institution of it but I just want to say although I'm saying like that's really great if somebody like gets their nails done or whatever at a local place that you can support that don't I don't want to say that there's any stigma around supporting a big business because lots of them are shutting lots of branches and that's normal everyday people who are being made redundant so if somebody gets their hair done at like Vidal Sassoon and it's just part of the group just get them vouchers for that because if that person takes those vouchers and spends them in their local branch then it's the hairdressers or the the waiters or the chefs or whoever it is that works in the local branch or whatever this chain in theory is that is supported by that and it shows on the the head office documents that that chain is thriving and it makes it less likely to get shut down so I don't want to feel that I'm giving any stigma to anyone who is just supporting sort of mainstream big businesses like it's post-covid the economy's strained at the moment so every, everything that's open is employing some normal person and yes the big person at the top of these big companies is the person probably not paying their taxes and all of that but it's the normal everyday people who actually work in the branch that you are likely to be going into and supporting with these vouchers. The next sort of gifting ideas I've got I kind of hinted at in last week's video which was my Fortnum and Mason tour. If you have somebody who is a tea lover in your life, Fortnum's Christmas tea, the green tea one is £12.50 and the normal tea is £16.50 and they come in these beautiful caddies. So if you have somebody in your life who is a tea drinker, Fortnum's tea in a caddy that they can keep once they are done. Absolutely beautiful as a standalone gift. If you want to pad it out you could also get them a nice bar of the, the Christmas library bar of chocolate which sitting down with that and a cup of tea, absolute bliss. And if you really want to pad it out, the tea timer from Fortnum. So I showed that in last week's video and it's got three different um, hourglass sand vials on it and one is black for black tea, one is white for white tea and one is green for green tea so you know what the colour of the sand corresponds with the type of tea and each of them run for whatever the sort of suggested I think it's two minutes for black, three for white and five for green but whatever the suggested ideal time is each of the sand timers runs for that time so if you've got somebody in your life who loves tea the timer is £25 so it is the most expensive part of this gift but the teas themselves as I said green Christmas tea was twelve fifty, normal Christmas tea £16.50 if they don't like Christmas teas there are normal teas but the Christmas tins are particularly nice and then the library bar is £6.95 so I will link them up below and you can sort of pick and mix. Sticking with Fortnum's if you have somebody who is a coffee drinker in your life rather than a tea drinker the Christmas coffee again comes in a beautiful caddy that you can keep. Is it a caddy if it's a coffee thing? Tin? Coffee tin? Beautiful tin that you can keep once you're done and that is £12.95 and I also again showed in last week's video the Fortnum and Mason Christmas travel cup which is £15 so again the coffee on its own would be great you could again get a tin of biscuits or the library spice bar to go with it if you want to spend a little bit more or the travel cup is £15 and I think there's such a growing awareness for people who do drink tea or coffee or whatever to have their own cup with them especially now that offices are opening back again and people are maybe commuting again in a way that they haven't been for the past two years. A travel cup is such a useful thing to gift somebody and that's really what I've tried to make my focus when I was coming up with these gift ideas is things that are useful or that are really beautiful or under £50, things that will serve a purpose in somebody's life because we don't need any more clutter from a mental point of view. I, I don't think any of us thrive in cluttered spaces that's cluttered with stuff that we wouldn't have picked and you know are holding on to because it was a gift and also just the environmental side of it like the amount of waste that must be generated by Christmas I'm sure somebody somewhere has the figures it must be an absolutely mind-blowing amount for gifts that are probably not really wanted and I don't want to sound really unappreciative of anyone who's ever gifted me anything but we all know what we're talking about here so I feel like gifts that serve a purpose are a really useful thing to gift somebody that's not going to just 
add nothing to their life. It's going to be really, really useful, serve a purpose and not end up in a landfill. So I have tried to like keep that in mind when coming up with all of these ideas, but I feel like the travel cup is sort of the epitome of that way of thinking. Something else that I think would make a really nice impact is being a nice gift, but which is super useful, especially to those of us who live in the UK, which is where most of my viewers are from, is a nice pair of leather gloves. That was something that I always thought had to be a really expensive item, but actually I was on the John Lewis website and they've got leather gloves for under £30. So there are a pair of men's that I've picked out in particular that are £28 and they're lined with Murano wool. So they're going to be super cosy, they're leather, so they're practical, they're rainproof, they're not going to get Soggy. They're going to look really really smart the way that leather gloves always do and they are under £30 so I think that's great and I think when you buy from John Lewis there's a certain sort of quality to John Lewis's own brand items that you know you're still getting a good thing. One that is completely customisable to your sort of price point is a jigsaw. I think a jigsaw is a great thing to give because if you're gifting it to somebody who either lives alone or doesn't have people in their house who are going to participate in the jigsaw with them it's something you can do on your own so speaking as an only child who's totally traumatized by getting given games as a child like board games that required like three to four players and it was just me jigsaws are such a good thing from the point of view that you don't need anyone else to do them but if you are gifting it to somebody who has a family who will join in it can be a thing for up to however many people want to participate it's it can be a group situation, it can be a single situation. So it's a kind of suit all gift from that point of view. And if you get like a thousand pieces or more, that can be several nights entertainment for somebody. Once somebody has made up the jigsaw and they break it off and they put it back in the box, if they put it away for a week, they could do it again the next week and they won't remember half the pieces. So jigsaws, I'm very into jigsaws these days, guys. If you have got somebody who has a bar cart as many people do now or even not but if you've got somebody who has a sort of pride in their home I feel like a really nice gift to give somebody is a really nice bottle opener so Anthropology have quite a few there is one that's called the Hop To It bottle opener it's a little bunny it's £14 and that's the sort of thing like I feel like a fancy bottle opener is probably not the sort of thing that most people would buy for themselves but it would just bring you such joy every time you would go into the kitchen and see it Anthropology also have the Whitney bottle opener which is a really sort of pretty one and they also in that range have a matching stopper so if you've got somebody who drinks wine as opposed to like beer or if you're somebody who has a teetotaler bottle opener and a six pack of, of Diet Coke in a glass bottle or whatever their soft drink of preference but Diet Coke from a glass bottle is... It's my favourite and the glass bottles are more expensive than buying plastic bottles so again it's the sort of indulgence that people probably don't make for themselves and um, so it doesn't even need to be an alcoholic thing if you're talking about the bottle opener but yeah if you've got somebody who's a wine drinker the Whitney stopper is also absolutely beautiful and as I say if you've got somebody who's a bar cart owner the stopper and the bottle opener to match to sit on their bar cart would probably be hugely appreciated. And again, you can buy the bottle opener on its own at £14, or you could buy the bottle opener with some bottles of something, or the, the stopper at £14 and a bottle of wine. Again, you can customise it to what you want to spend, but I feel like particularly the bunny bottle opener, because it's going to be such a sort of heavy, impressive piece of equipment, I feel like it stands alone. I don't feel like you need to pad it out, but you can if you want to get somebody a bottle of something to go with it. It's up to you. But even if you say you want to spend a tenner on the bottle, that and the opener, £25. And you've got a really impressive gift that is something somebody will again use in the future, but might not have bought for themselves. Related to that, because I was on the Anthropology website, I also saw that they have a wine valley, which I think whether you're somebody who has a bar cart or not, like my parents don't have a bar cart, but I feel like this would look so good just sitting on the kitchen it's like a marble base it's got a stopper on the side it's 36 pounds so it is a bit more expensive than buying the opener or the stopper on its own but it's a really beautiful impressive piece of equipment and again you could gift it on its own or if you wanted to get a bottle of something to put into it you've got 14 pounds left and you're still under your 50 pounds and again it's something that the stopper is practical the marble holder for it is just really really beautiful I think most people would enjoy seeing that in their kitchen or their utility room or wherever they keep their wine and it's something they will continue to use and continue to get joy from for many years to come rather than just being a sort of spark of joy at Christmas when they open it and then 
trying to find a place for it for the rest of all time. The next idea that I've got for you as well is photo frames with photos in them because we live in a digital age so many people now do not actually print photos. Everyone takes more photos but we don't do much with them. It's really easy to go through Facebook or Instagram or whatever, save a, a nice picture or if you have a picture from a holiday or something that you can get printed and put in a nice frame. So I got Lauren the New York frame again from Anthropology. Uh, I'm quite a big Anthropology shopper these days, don't know if you can tell. For Lauren's birthday back in April I got her the New York frame from Anthropology because we've obviously been to New York together several times and then for my birthday this year I asked for some, there's some beautiful photo frames in paper chase that are you know under £20 it's, it's easy to get a nice photo frame for under £20 I will link up some options down below you don't have to put a picture in it if you don't want to but it just makes it that little bit more personal if you have a picture of them you know it might be from their wedding or something it might be a picture of you and this person together you know a holiday that you've experienced together or it could just be a nice picture from their personal collection on Facebook or whatever as I said just something that they're probably not going to go to the effort of getting printed but then I think once you do have these things in frames you're like oh this is really nice we should go back to it so I feel like photo frames with photos in them are such a nice thing for most people to have that people don't make the effort to have anymore now because we don't get pictures printed the same way so photo frames and then my last two gift ideas these are the two that are slightly over they're under the hundred pounds mark first of all if you've got somebody who likes homewares and is into cute things I have got the Saletti mouse lamps I will link up my blog post on the lamps I've got pictures of them whatever you can go look at them they are such a joyful thing to own they make me so happy every single day to see these little lamps so they're a practical thing because they're a lamp obviously it has to match the person's house so it's, it's a bit more specific you want to take a look at them make sure it's somebody's vibe to have a gold mouse lamp but I think they're super super cute they're 76 pounds I think the Saletti mouse lamps are such a cute gift and Saletti just have gorgeous homewares in general so I feel like anything from Saletti could have been on this list but trying to keep it from personal experience and for something that would serve a purpose and be useful the mouse lamps are my gift of choice and the very last thing that I've got to suggest to you is if you're gifting somebody who is in the UK a national trust membership is such a good thing to gift somebody it gives them a year of being able to go out and explore different properties have different experiences an individual membership with national trust is 72 pounds but if you're buying for a couple a couple's membership is 120 pounds so it would work out it's 60 pounds per head so if you've got a couple that you don't quite know what to buy I think a national trust membership is such a great thing to get somebody my parents have national trust memberships they're both retired so and well I was going to say they go out almost every week they haven't because of the pandemic but pre-pandemic they used it so so much and now that they're both retired they're going to use it so much more as things open back up and um, and speaking for myself personally along the same lines I have a historic Scotland membership which is kind of a similar idea but instead of properties owned by the National Trust it's properties owned by historic Scotland so depending on what the person's into but I feel like most people the National Trust is a bit more general than most people can find uh, something in there whereas maybe like the historic ones a bit more specific um, and it's a bit smaller but it is a bit cheaper so if you've got somebody in Scotland who is a big history fan a membership to Historic Scotland I would personally highly recommend um, but yeah I feel like National Trust membership most people would get something out of that those are all the gifts that I've got to recommend so as I said my ethos was to try and think about things that would either serve a purpose or elevate somebody's experience that they're already having such as things like the bottle opener or you know like having a Gucci lipstick to replace their normal lipstick. I think looking at what somebody's got in their life already and maybe giving them a better version of that is a really good way to make sure that you're gifting them something that is useful not going to clutter up the place or getting somebody like an experience or a service whether it's something that's indulgent like theatre tickets that they might not have paid for themselves but would really enjoy or whether it's something that just takes the pressure off of them you know whether it's a hair voucher, nail voucher or a Netflix voucher I think that's such a good way to reduce waste, give decent gifts and as I said most of these with the exception of the last two were under £50 so hopefully not going to break your bank balance either 
So thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been useful. Let me know down below what you're gifting people this year. I would love more ideas, particularly more budget friendly options. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the 1st of December for Vlogmas to kick off. Bye!